Lisa, yes, okay. I'm gonna make an intro. Um, Lisa is, um, she's a nature enthusiast and a founder of Hope Grows. Hope Grows um, is a wonderful organization, a nonprofit that provides care for the caregivers. So how many of you are caregivers that may have experienced some stress? Maybe a few hands. She's gonna talk all about that today. It's really, really important to take care of your needs first and foremost, so you can be the best caregiver as possible. So she's gonna talk about that. And Lisa is a licensed professional counselor um, and a certified paleontologist. Her professional experience in grief and bereavement and the connection to the natural world has led her to the path in the nonprofit space. She also holds certificates in addictions, counseling, and horticultural therapy. Um, so please, um, let's welcome Lisa Story. Woo. The, yes. I think just, there you go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the beginning, right? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so great to be here today. I am, I was thrilled when I was driving here today to see sun. We haven't had the sun in a long time, right? <laughs> it was actually wonderful to have it not rain. Um, but the wind the last couple of days, right? It, I'm glad you're all here because I thought maybe with the wind, some of you might have landed in the land of Oz, right? <laughs> um, yesterday, I was, I was saying to some of our staff, Auntie M, Auntie M. <laughs> so it was, um, it was quite, a, quite a bit of wind there. Um, but I bet sometimes, though, whether you're newly diagnosed or you're going through the journey of Parkinson's, um, not only the caregiver, but the one that is receiving the care, um, sometimes maybe feels like they are in the land of Oz. How many might feel that way at times? Yeah, quite a few. Okay. Yeah, so um, the wind was kind of um, appropriate for the uh, topic of stress today. All right, I'm going to be multitasking here, which isn't always good. And, um, and after the, this uh, present, wonderful presentation we had about sound and speech, I hope I can live up to the expectations that were set. All right, so let me see where I'm at here. Next. Wonderful. Okay, so who is Hope Grows? How many in here may know Hope Grows? Can you raise your hand? Okay, a few. So what we are is an organization, a nonprofit, that provides emotional and mental health support for the family caregiver and those that they're caring for. And we do that through such a wide array of different services. And um, all I can tell you is if you're not in our um, database, maybe get there so that you can see all the different programs and services that we do provide. All right, so we basically, our mission was founded in 2010, and we basically are a place for caregivers. The mission was guided by a self-empowerment study where caregivers reported that the most valuable services included programming that helped with empowerment, self-care, and a change of environment. A place for caregivers, Hope Grows, is a recognized direct service clinical model. Our nature-centric and person-centered approach to caregiver wellness incorporates emotional and mental health support into the family care process. We become the continuity of care, the place for stress management and stress reduction, time and life management, and when the transitions of providing care become very difficult, we provide counseling, coaching, mediation, and intervention. Caregiver stress, compassion fatigue, and burnout define our care model. And we believe by seeking support early in the care process, both the caregiver and the one on the receiving end of the care are supported with maintaining meaning in life, continuing with a purpose, being able to adjust to the constant changes that occur and then continue to feel valued. Ah, sorry, hang on. Okay. 
told you, multitasking is not my thing. All right, our primary goal with Hope Grows basically is we help caregivers stay healthy while they are providing care to their loved one. And our mission is deeply rooted in the belief that nature and the natural world can be very therapeutic. And we also have a core value that states that a caregiver not only needs a break, they actually deserve a break. We cultivate your wellness. This is we, where we are located in Moon Township. I wanted to start by talking about Chicago, the pop rock group from the 1970s. They had a great song titled, It's Hard to Say I'm Sorry. Some of the lyrics in the song tells us that everyone needs a little time away. Even lovers need a holiday from each other. I truly believe that holds true for not only the caregiver, but the one that is receiving the care. We've seen that time and time again in our services that we provide at our organization. So our Iris Respite House in Healing Gardens, like I said, is located in Moon Township. It is a one-of-a-kind nature-centric approach to caregiver wellness. It is an overnight bed and breakfast for caregivers to come and take a break away overnight, or two or three, however long you can manage to do that. We have 11 healing and restorative gardens, and we incorporate nature and nature therapy, and we believe that the connection to the natural world uh, defines our key elements of our programming. So this summer, our gardens open up in May and th through November. Come out and join us, take walks in the gardens, find a place to sit under a shaded tree, and relax. That's right there in and, in and of itself is stress reducing. All right, so that we basically, at our location, is we are a place for you to engage in that change of environment. Well, there we go. <laughs> our primary goal today, though, is to grow together and recognize the barriers of the illness or the disease of Parkinson's. Well, I'm really multitasking. I'm doing three things here. <laughs> Did it switch? Okay. So um, we have done over the past several years a program called Grow Together with the Parkinson's Foundation, and we have helped 70-plus uh, families, uh, the caregiver and their care receiver, in this program. And what we have learned from that is that, um, that there is a need for these three R's called recognize, refer, and reinforce. Over the course of our 12-year history at Hope Grows, along with our staff of mental health professionals that have 20 plus years, it takes two in this, the caregiver and the one on the end of the receiving end of being cared for. Um, it includes a dual respite model whereby everyone involved with the illness or the disease needs to have a voice in this. So we continue to implement that model. The first thing we want everybody to do is recognize barriers. Regardless of who or where you are in this illness or disease, everyone has a need for empathy. Everyone has a need to tell their story. Everyone has a need to have individual reflection in this. You're, you need to have respect to have your voice heard. You need to recognize when help is needed and when it is not needed. We need to recognize our stress and our limitations, and we also need to set boundaries with each other. The next is to refer, refer to some affirmations. So when one is diagnosed with the illness or disease, emotions become extremely elevated. The disease becomes the focus, the center focus, and in some cases, the people in the illness or the disease or with the illness and the disease diagnosis become lost. From the caregiver perspective, a lot of thoughts surface, including fear, isolation, and perhaps a sense of loss as well. As the illness or disease progresses, that caregiver begins to feel shame, guilt, and regret. Guilt seems to surface a lot among caregivers, and then taking a short break may feel impossible not alone taking an overnight break becomes out of the question. Rightly so. No one can take care for your loved one better than you can. However, we want you to put on that oxygen mask. We want you to take that, 
time to, to regain that strength, to keep building the resilience that you need. At Hope Grows, we understand this, and we can help with all of these emotions and also to help build your strength and your resilience. The, this is the reason it's so important to pull your care team together early on. But no worries if you haven't done that yet. That is why there are places to help, such as the Parkinson's Foundation, all of the wonderful vendors that are outside tr offering their services, and also Hope Grows. We are all here to support you no matter where you're at in your journey with this illness. Refer to support and repeat these affirmations. If you struggle to be aware of these affirmations now or along your journey, pick up the phone and get support. It's probably a time for a break. Caregivers, I want you to realize that you need to be aware of the possible effect of your own physical and mental health on your ability to keep providing care. And you, I also want you to strive to be aware of the personal problems and conflicts that may arise that then potentially create like a negative impact on the relationship you have with your care partner. Okay, and then, whoop, there we go. Sorry, I forgot to put that up there. I didn't realize it was there. <laughs> All right. There's also a handout in your bag that has these things on there. So um, one side has a nice handout to summarize what we're talking about today, and on the other side, it has information about the Grow Together program. All right, so then we need to talk about the care, one that's receiving care. Let's not forget about that person that's been diagnosed with the illness or the disease. When a diagnosis occurs, emotions become elevated for that person as well. From their perspective, a lot of thoughts surface, including the same thing as the caregiver, fear, isolation, and a sense of loss. The disease becomes the center focus. And in some cases, you, your identity becomes forgotten in that disease. So a strong negative outlook happens, and then you end up in a cyclical loop of negativity. The disease begins to define who you are instead of who the person is. Refer to support and repeat these affirmations. If you struggle, like I said about the caregivers, if you're struggling to be aware of these affirmations now or along your journey, remember you that you have the right to pick up the phone and get support. This would be your time for a break. So care partners, I strive to assertively speak my mind and share my feelings, and I strive to think of things other than my illness and my disease. Because what we don't want to see happen is we do not want caregiving to define the caregiver's identity, and we don't want the disease to define the care partner's identity. So that, that, that's the importance of this referring process. All right, then we want to talk about the last of the three R's, and that's reinforce. We want to reinforce positivity. What is one thing that we all have in common? What do you think we have in common? Pardon me? We want to connect, yeah. Right, what else? I'm sorry? Hope, yes, yes, we all have some positive things, right? Absolutely, we also have stress. We have a lot of stress, everybody does. Everybody's level of stress is different. But what do we really want to reinforce? We want to reinforce each other's strengths. We want to reinforce each other's resilience. And we want to reinforce that given the right encouragement, we can all be empowered to be our best self. So we all have this ability to be positive. It's different for everybody. But we all have strength. We all have resilience. And like I said, given that right encouragement, we can all be really empowered to be our best self. As I've mentioned, whenever someone is diagnosed with Parkinson's, there can be a strong negative outlook on both sides, the caregiver and the care partner. We begin to focus on the loss of what is ahead of us instead of where we are in the moment. And then that ends up, that negativity becomes a cyclical loop. You know, it's, it's, it's too bad that our brains are really hardwired for negativity. 
You know, if, if five people say something to you in a day, four can say something totally positive to you, and one person says something negative. That's what we remember. We remember that negative. And it's hard. It is. It's really hard to keep ourselves on that positive track. But it's important, though, for each other to begin to reinforce the positive in our lives together. I love this quote. If you want to take a minute to read, you cannot get, keep giving to others if you do not give to yourself first. It is like pouring water from a vessel. You cannot pour and pour without ever refilling it. Eventually, it will run dry. So we have to constantly keep that at the forefront. Not just the caregiver, but also the care partner too. We have to make sure that we're staying at the top of our game, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So where do we begin to build the strength, this resilience, and this empowerment? Well, one is understanding our stress, finding moments of care for self, finding ways to take breaks, allowing for each other to have a voice in the illness or the disease. And then sometimes it takes surrendering to the control that the illness and the disease has over us. Last but not least, connecting to nature. I love nature for many reasons. The beauty, the amazing survival of plants and animals, the nurturing it provides for humans, and it's the birth of new beginnings. We're in spring. We're at this moment of new beginnings. One thing nature, though, does provide for me is the healing properties for stress reduction. It provides an overall sense of well-being, a place where one can surrender control. But first, we need to figure out how do we connect with nature. Everybody's different. For me, I immerse myself in it daily. Uh, it just becomes a part of my existence. However, not everybody has that kind of connection to nature, and that's okay. However, we all do connect. If that were not the case, the floral industry would not be a billion dollar industry, nor would the hospitality industry. We retreat to nature, to the beach, to the mountains, to the lakes for stress reduction. But you don't have to spend all that money. You can just step right outside your door. Take your shoes off. Put your bare feet on the earth. It's called earthing. It's very grounding. It can really help. Staring into a tree, breathing in the, the wind and, and the sun, and even the rain. Rain can be very therapeutic if you allow it. It becomes a mindset, just like the illness itself. It's a mindset that you have to overcome. Okay? All right, so let's talk about the strength. You want to start by identifying your personal warning signs and your sources of stress. Talk about it with each other. What are your warning signs? What are your sources? I have a balloon here, and um, stop by our table. We have balloons in a little bag with an instructions on how to, how to use it. You can use a balloon with stress. Blow it all into the balloon, and you have three ways you can let the stress go. You can let it float away. You can squeak <laughs> by pulling it apart. <laughs> or you can fill it up really big and pop it. So there's three ways right there you can reduce your stress. The other thing you can do is breathing. We have our lungs. We can take it everywhere we go. When you're feeling stressed, take those deep breaths in through your nose. Hold it for a little bit. Let it out through your mouth. These are simple things, but it's amazing, though, when we're under stress, how we forget to do those simple things. Then you also want to ask yourself daily, have I eaten today? How much water did I drink? How much was my, you know, how was my sleep, right? Did I exercise? Am I breathing deeply enough? Because when we're under stress, we have a tendency to shallow breathe or hold our breath. How do I feel in my environment? And is there something that I really, really need today? So these are things that you can do to continue to keep your strength up, to keep strong. All right, the next is resilience. Try to come up with at least nine ingredients for your recipe for wellness. I could stand here and tell you nine things that I do, but it might not resonate with you. You have to, you have to pick your own recipe, right? 
And if you feel like you're missing some of the ingredients to a successful recipe, reach out to Hope Grows or someone else that you trust. We also want to keep in mind that it's important to cross-pollinate some of our ingredients with each other so that we can become stronger together, more resilient together, and help each other get to a place of staying and feeling empowered. All right, and then I wanted to mention our family caregiver program. This is the one that I talked about a little bit earlier on. It's a family-centered approach, and it's tailored to meet the individual needs of the caregiver and the care receiver together. The comprehensive four-week program offers a variety of mental, emotional, therapeutic support for both the caregiver and the care receiver, and it helps in navigating your responses to your specific need. Consider joining us. We have some papers in the, well, no, I think that's also in your, your book, too, is about the, yeah, I did say that, about the program. So cons consider reaching out to Casey at Parkinson's to get signed up for that, or um, just to Hope Grows as well. All right, and last, empowerment. That's where we want to get, because when we are empowered, we feel in control. When we're empowered, we can put our best foot forward. So by adding a positive outlook, our focus does begin to shift. We begin to focus on our strengths, not our weaknesses. We begin to focus on our resilience, not our inflexibilities, and the outcome becomes empowerment. All right, and I want to mention one more thing before I end today. We would not be Hope Grows without suggesting nature as an antidote to stress. I mentioned it a little bit, but I'll talk a little bit further about it. Um, because when you connect to nature, it, you in turn can build strength and resilience. Some thoughts to consider is transitioning through the seasons of care can be similar to transitioning through the seasons in nature, right? By connecting with each other through nature, we can learn more about ourselves and how we react in situations and how we continue to connect with the disease. There's plenty of research that exists that healing and restorative benefits of nature as an incentive to help cultivate our wellness of mind, body, and spirit is, is off the charts. Reflecting and engaging our senses with nature and spending brief moments of time outside really does build resilience. And just for some fun facts, although I find them not fun, a little sad, um, only 5% of our time is actually spent outside. And it's typically getting from one place to another, and it's typically just for an organized event or special event. Spending time in the woods is vital to our mood state and immune function. Sitting under a tree, the trees omit, omit terpenes, which increase our natural killer cells in our body. And the soil, if you choose to work the soil, it contains beneficial bacteria that does release serotonin in the brain. So if you've ever gardened and, or if you've ever spent time outside playing with dirt or this, even the sand and you feel better, there's a, there's a chemical reason in your brain why you're feeling better. So um, relating to nature is a form of self-care. All right, so one thing I want to leave with is nature does not expect anything from us. It is one place that we are able to go into and actually release control. And when we do that, sometimes control causes us stress because we're trying to control things we cannot. And when we do release that control, it's amazing how much our, our, our stress levels just decrease. All right. What else can I tell you? So in summary, there is a reciprocal relationship that does occur between self and nature. We cannot survive without plants. By understanding the power of giving and receiving in nature, we begin to apply that to our relationship between the cared for and the caregiver. While we give, we are also receiving. We just have to be open to both so that true connection can be abundant. The result, it becomes a stronger relationship in this disease. Okay. 
All right, stop by our table today, pick up a balloon. We have them at the table. We also have some other things uh, for you to you know, take home with you. And I just wanna end with humans are resilient, like plants. All that is needed to flourish is warmth, nourishment, tenderness, and someone to understand our individual needs. And keep in mind that trees need hugs too. Thank you.